I play um, an assassin called Agent 47, who um, is the gun for hire and um, probably the best at his job. Um, he's actually a clone. He's human, but he's a clone. And he is the best in his uh, class. And um, he kills people for money. I was intrigued by the idea of someone who is accused of having had their emotions genetically removed and whether that was possible. And if not, as my contention would be, um, how they might manifest themselves and with whom and where. And uh, so, yeah, the idea of someone who on the surface seems to be sort of indestructible and, and a complete killing machine, in fact, is not a machine or any kind of robot, droid, cyborg, or anything. He's a human being who bleeds and feels. He's just very, very good at hiding it. There are whole legions of fans of Hitman who've explored his background and um, written about it at length. And to find the story of his life and his progression from, you know, the asylum sort of all the way through is very available. One can readily find this um, resource. So for an actor, it's, very, um, it's a real gift. We know that this is a fiction, but in the same way as adapting, you know, a, a loved novel is a fiction. And I think this has narrative and character qualities that are very much like that. The film is directed by um, Ali Bach, Alexander Bach, who is um, a wonderful commercial director. And um, he has, what I think he has that's different from other action sequences that I've seen is he has a real sense of, of the soul of, of the of the um, of the action, so that it's not just flashy visuals. I think that what I saw in his work, um, his commercial work, was a was an appreciation of something more beautiful. Hannah brings a wonderful naivety to the role of of Katya. Um, you know, this is a character who is learning a huge amount about herself. Um, as the film progresses, we learn in so many ways and has been on this endless quest. We were very lucky to have Jonathan Eusebio and John Valera doing the stunts on this and the fights. And they, again, they don't just create fights arbitrarily. They are interested in characters fighting styles. So each character had their own style designed for them. Um, you know, John Smith's very much a brawler, kind of a big haymaker, swinging hard nut. 47 is a far more tactical, efficient fighter. You know, if you've played the game, you will, I hope, notice a lot of circular movements to do with legs, breaking necks, and uh, stamps, and locks, grips, and throws that are all to do with using momentum. So obviously, you want to see the silver ballers because they are iconic. And I spent many weeks with a fantastic armorer um, who trained me in to the point where I could put a bag on my head and take it apart, put it back together, and, and shoot two of them at, without seeing, which was just such a cool feeling. But um, he he was very insistent again on the, on the reality and the truth of it, as well as obviously the safety for for us on set. Forty seven is an improviser, so you know he can, when all the weapons are gone, and we'll see this in the film. You know he can use a drinking glass, he can use a, a Bible. He can use um, uh, an air compression hose. Anything, just as in the game, he improvises with what he can find. And that was great, because you saw the fight, the people who, you know, John and John, who choreographed the fights, had really taken that to the nth degree. And they're looking around rooms, just thinking what they can use. And so you, there's a real sense of improvisation about it, which appeals to me. Bina Degler, the costume designer, is very smart because the first thing she did before even getting into references was sit and talk with me about it. She wanted to get a sense of where I was coming from. And I was very, very 
keen that this suit be exemplary, that it be classic and timeless. I wanted this suit to be, to make sense in 2040 or 1940, just a well-cut suit. No frills, no bells, no catwalk, no fashion, no, just a really good classic suit. There's so many exciting big set pieces. I mean, I love the stuff that uses the streets of Berlin, you know, so you really see the whole city from the rooftops down to the streets, round the corner into the underground station, through a bus, you know, that kind of thing where it's, it's real, it's not generated or fake. There's just a real city being really filmed. That's exciting to me.